Imagine, if you will, that we're at the White House and the president's facial features look like a mouse. This is true, at least right here, but the president's way too capable of fear. Jerry Parks is his name, president sees his game, who's pushed into politics and fell into fame. I introduce you to him only because I must, but he's the last person on the earth that should want to trust the Democrat, Manic Rat, and all that he did, showed he got a much false and scared little kid. Fucking idiot acts like it's all a game, but a suit and a tie only makes you look sane. Jerry Barnes, the commander in chief, not even certain about his own beliefs, way too concerned about his personal needs. He demanded in the second the country he leads. Leviticus Briggs, filthy and bone, they're right in the back, locked up. And it was a few minutes in at the ride before any of them had spunk up. Bowen said to Leviticus and filthy, I've seen this Griggs guy on the TV. I'm not sure, but I think that's him. He's the leader of a cult or some weird religion. Secret Service enters the room to give the president the information. Sorry to disturb you, sir, but Oswald's accomplished his operation. Tell me more, the president said. We got Griggs alive. If he's not dead? No, sir. When Agent Oswald brought him in, there was three other men and Griggs tortured them. Rutherford Leviticus, a professor, and two homeless men looking under the weather. Oz said even though they don't have wealth, they're as much a threat as Griggs himself. Keep him in custody. Don't let him go, the president said. He was very scared, though. Oswald lied to his government and claimed that Leviticus and Briggs were criminally insane, so they keep the death clock and run from the terrible horror of the world will soon to become. Even Rutherford, one of big, filthy, and moe in the back of a paddy wagon to prison. They go, they get locked in the block, and the shit don't stop locked up because Oswald fucking. Cop. They got put in the same cage of snake like hell. Griggs bribed the guards and got his very own cell. So there they were, stuck in a cage, bleeding from injuries and shaking with rage. Filthy whispered, We must escape. I agree, but our chance isn't that great. Across the hall was more to big cell with his furious eyes from the fires of hell. He looks pissed, but with a good cause. He was betrayed by the cop named Nas. I'll bash his face with the rock for shooting my leg and taking the death clock. Mortifick left inside his cell. He's long gone now, plus you're in jail. You're locked up too! For now, but I'll escape and you'll rot like a cow. Rutherford whispered in a painful haze. We gotta get out, it's just six more days! Four more days, bruh, said Mo, but about the professor they just didn't know. There was a guard in hearing range. Mortifick called him with his voice to range. Excuse me, officer. His face turned on. But this shouldn't be, I'm a man of God. Let me speak to the president, I'm sure he'll see that I'm an innocent minister, he'll believe me. Mortifick bitched and got his way, and he spoke to Barnes by the end of the day. Even with the good guy spilling it all, Griggs managed to get himself a private phone call. That bastard's a liar and he's at it again. He didn't even get searched when he came in, and if he gets Barnes, on the phone, I know that he'll get the pardon and be free to go! Minister Mortifick alone in a room, on the phone with the president bringing the doom. President Barnes, this is Mortifick Griggs, I slaughter the world to fix how it is. I'll continue with the horrible terror that I do, and you'll release me or I'll implicate you! Okay, stop! I don't give a fuck, I'll pardon you if you just keep your mouth shut! So Griggs went back to his cell to just wait, cause he knew in the end this wasn't his fate. Leviticus heckled from across the hall, lit Griggs in his cell six and a half feet tall. You're an evil son of a bitch, and I would, give him the chance to love to spill your blood! But I spoke to Barnes on a private line, and I'm getting out of here, it's just a matter of time. Back to the president, Jerry Barnes, he sits at the desk and signs the pardon. He's releasing the man with the arms, with the full knowledge of what he could be starting. He covers his past just to cover his ass, so that everyone can't see. But it's 11 p.m. on the second day, back to the federal holding facility. Leviticus screamed at Mortifick. Lies! The blind man can see the hatred in his eyes. You're fucking nuts! I know they got me, but you're not gonna get off of this scot free! Greg stood there smiling down at the three. You'll hold your tongue or I'll stab at thee! Rutherford turned his back on the preacher man and he said, God damn it, we should've just ran! Mortifick threw across and broke the light socket as he summoned a big hunter's knife from his pocket through the bars in the dark. He threw it in a straight line and stuck in deep and severed Rutherford's spine. Blood squirted all over Filthy's face and the knife in the neck still stuck in place. Griggs was laughing! Decades old. And his voice in the dark was a terrible cold. Then the minister's cell bust open with a creak as he walked out through the dark like a freak. Filthy and Moe deafened him with screams, but the guards elsewhere couldn't hear these things. Mortifick still laughing. The time had come. He walked down the hall, approaching his freedom. Be in hell. I can't stay, but it's your fault. God wanted it this way.